الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه وأهل بيته ومن اتبع سنة يجمعين فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم All praises belong to Allah and all the salutation and prayers for Muhammad peace be upon him and, uh, and his family and his companions uh, Today we are going to talk about Surah Al-Jinn Surah Jinn and the last Surah um, Araf when we pray, uh, talked about this is about 7th to 10th year of life of Prophet after he became Prophet. In all the things which are interactive we have heard about it and the Muslims uh, because it was a very long Surah we didn't talk much about other things but they simultaneously when the, one of the Surah or the chapter was revealed there are other verses which are belonging to other chapters also revealed simultaneously. So what it is recorded that these three years, these were the two things are reported, but actually it is not the case. There have been a lot of other verses revealed in this time. So next was Surah Jinn. Surah Jinn has, let me give you a little prelude what happened. Uh, this within the sixth and seventh year it was revealed. And apparently after he profited the 10th year when he was released from this uh, incarceration, which was in the Shoaib Abi Talib, I am displaying this picture of the place of Mecca, as you could see, Valley of Abu Talib. Abu Talib owned a place which is this area. Are you seeing the picture? Can you see this? Hello? Yes. Uh, you are seeing yeah. this? Okay. So this is the valley. You see the Mecca here, Kaaba here, and this is the valley which is behind the Jabli Abu. This is Jabal, the mountain. The king has made the palace here. Actually, it's a mountain on which Prophet and Ibrahim and, and Prophet Muhammad used to stand up and invite people. So this valley belonged to the Abu Talib, and they were all forced into incarceration here in an open prison, which we call, which we see today in Palestine, an open prison. Uh, so what happened here is that uh, these people were uh, very much getting against Muslim, and they would not let them come to pray or do anything. And uh, finally, they decided to how to hurt them more. Uh, they came to Abu Talib, the uncle of Prophet Muhammad, the peace and blessing of Allah be upon him. Abu Talib is the uncle on, to whom Prophet's grandfather, Abu Abdul Muttalib, when he was passing away, he made him his guardian. Abu Talib is the father of Ali radiallahu anhu, who happened to be the later on married to the Prophet's daughter, Fatima, the youngest one, and he became the fourth Khalifa also of the Muslims also. But he had a lot of quality and attributes. Uh, so he had many sons. One of them was Talib. The Arab called the father with the name of the son. So Abu Talib means father of the Talib because one of his son is for eldest son. They often Arab called the eldest son's name to the father. So this is what happened that um, uh, the things were getting harsher and Muslims who have returned back from Abyssinia, they were also being treated roughly and getting abused and more and more difficult for them to do anything. They will often beat them, they will often throw dirt at them, they will mock them when they read Quran, when they pray, they put them dirt upon them, as we have mentioned in many times. So one of the uh, companion, Abu Bakr, the, who, was the, who happened to be after on um, Islam, uh, established Islamic State in Medina, he was the first caliph after Prophet passed away. So Abu, uh, Abu Bakr was a respected, honorable man, yet they treated him so uh, harshly that uh, he also decided to leave Mecca. So once he took a belonging in about uh, uh, five days distance, he met a person, Abdul Dar, uh, Ibn al Dagna, and who was one of the chief of a tribe. And he found that Abu Bakr leaving Mecca, because everybody knows what is going on in Mecca, because of Muhammad Sallallahu and Islam, there was a kind of a division going on in the in the in the community so he asked abu bakr why are you leaving and he said because they will not let me practice my faith they would stop me and so i'm thinking to emigrate to some place so abu uh, uh, ibn al dagna said no you cannot do that you are one of the bestest and finest men in the city and we cannot let you leave if people good people like you if you, they leave the town we will have nothing good left in our community so he brought him back and he brought him back and then he asked him that do not pray Quran loudly because Quraysh get offended because they think that you're preaching them and they did not like this. So their women and children get affected by the way you read the Quran. 
So please read it quietly. So Abu Bakr radiallahu says, I talk to my God in my prayers. I'm not going to follow these things. So finally, he said, but do whatever you want to do, but try not to get the other people disturbed by your prayers. So this was happening with them. So about on seventh year of the prophethood, which is known as uh, seven, uh, uh, Nabua, seventh year of Nabua, uh, it was about the month of Muharram. Then they decided a man named Mansur bin Akrama, he wrote a contract, he wrote a, 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 a deal which was that uh, they put it on Kaaba that uh, Abu Talib, the Prophet's uncle, who was a tribal chief also, everybody in his family of the Hashim, which is the pro Prophet's tribe. And then uh, all of them, the people who belong to Bunu Hashim, the Prophet's clan, they all should be separated and isolated in this valley. And this is now where it is look like, this area, which is now... So uh, they were incarcerated, another view of the same thing. For three years, they were all Muslims were hurled into this area and they were not allowed to, to deal with anything. Uh, as you can see, this is the place where Abu Bakr's house used to be in this picture. Uh, and now they have built hotel and all that. And this is the Surah Jinn, which we'll be talking about where the where a group of uh, about some several hundred of Jinn, another creature came and accepted Islam. Uh, so, uh, the deal was that they would not do trade with him. There will be social boycott. There will be business boycott. There will be nobody will be allowed to uh, visit them. They will not be allowed to come out of this area other than their, their absolute necessities and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, it has been reported Ibn, by Ibn Sa'ad that uh, children used to cry because of hunger and the Quraysh would be laughing that, look, they have been tortured by putting in this isolation. And one of the uh, mention of the Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas radiallahu anhu that one night he was so hungry that he found a, a leather, a leather, and he put water and boiled it and chewed and burned and ate that leather piece uh, so that he could survive. So th for three years, they were all into this thing. Finally, um, uh, there was a person named Hashan bin Amri who was uh, related to the Banu Hashim tribe from the relation and uh, was a grandchild of the, the Abdul Muttalib because his daughter was married, the Prophet's uh, aunt's son. Uh, he actually went to meet another person named Zuhair uh, and he said to him that would you, would you prefer and like that your family and your relatives are being incarcerated and you are uh, eating and your children are having, having a free time and so on and so forth. Um, so he said, what can I do? He said, if you support me, then I can talk to them. So then they both went to Mata'am bin Adi. There was another man and they spoke to him and Abu Khairi bin Hasham, Zama bin Aswad. These people got together and they went to speak to the people uh, and they tried to have this uh, release of this contract which was signed and written and put inside the Kaaba and some says it was on the door of Kaaba so at that time Abu Jahl tried to resist them but then Zama was another person he said we never supported it what you did but since you did it we are not going to support you and Matam bin Adi and Adi bin Qais, Zama bin Al-Aswad, Abu Al-Bakhtari, Zuhair they all put on their war gears and weapons and they came to, to release the family of Banu Hashim and they opened the door and it was about three years this have passed which is the 10th year and uh, this is the time also where Prophet had after the release from this to Mehraj so they opened and they took it out when they took out the contract and Abu Talib stood up and said that if uh, Muhammad has received a revelation that um, that contract has been eaten up by termite except the name of Allah and they said, we don't believe if he's really prophet, he can do that. The God has informed him. So at that time, when they opened, they found that except the Ismaq Allah was there and the rest of it was eaten by termite. So that's how the contract was uh, null and void. This is now contract is no more valid. So Muslim got free from the prison. And at the 10th year, this is about the time when Khatija, the wife of Prophet Sallallahu the first wife, she is the mother of four children. She had gotten elderly. She was about 65 years age and she could not endure the hardship of this uh, incarceration. And she got ill in about uh, 10th of Muharram. She passed away. And in those days, uh, there was no funeral prayer was uh, commanded. So Prophet Sallallahu himself buried her into the uh, Hajun, which is uh, Mu'alla. 
uh, this is the place of the cemetery named and her uh, shrine is there. Um, also his uncle, uh, Abu, Abu Talib, who was about uh, 20 or 30, 30, 25 or 35 years older than Prophet also, he at that time also got ill and he has gotten exhausted after coming off this incarceration and he was about to die. There's a little thing about that was Abu Talib was ever Muslim or not. According to Bukhari and Muslim, he never declared Shahada. But then Tabrani and other uh, books have narrated that uh, he said the Shahada. And at that time, when Prophet visited him at the, his deathbed, and he asked him to say uh, uh, Shahada or declare the Shahada, and I will ask Allah for forgiveness. Even though this uncle loved Prophet very much, he was there with him all along. He had never let off of any guards of his. He would feed him first before he would feed his children. He would make Prophet sleep with him as a child. He would take him everywhere. He would go in a journey. He loved his nephew very much. And according to the, some uh, Muslim scholar that he declared the Shahada just before he passed away. And inshallah, he will be in the Jannah. But some uh, narration is that he denied. So uh, we will go with Ibn Ishaq. I, I believe that it was true that man believed he saw all the Prophet's miracle. His children accepted Islam. Why would he deny? Even though the, the, they say that the Quraysh tried to incite him not to declare the Shahada. Uh, after this time, when Prophet ﷺ found that uh, these people are not listening to him and not giving him the, uh, the, uh, the heed of uh, or being, uh, getting harsher with him. So there was a place uh, which is about uh, 60 or more kilometers away from Mecca. And this is known as uh, Taif. So Prophet went to Taif. I'll make this map to see from here how you could see the Taif area. Uh, this is Mecca and this area is Taif. So Prophet went from Mecca to Taif and tried to invite these people to the Islam. And when he tried to invite them and there was three of the leaders he met. Uh, they were the, the rulers were there, Omer uh, was the tribe, and uh, there were three brothers, Abdel Ail, Abdi Alil, and Masood and Habib. And we invited them to Islam and they responded him very harshly. They said, if you are the prophet, then why you are tearing the shroud of the Kaaba? And the other one says, uh, did God not find anybody other than you to be the prophet? Then the third one says, I do not think uh, that you are a prophet. Even if you are the truthful, then there is no need for me to oppose you. And uh, if you are a liar, there is no need to talk to you. This is how harshly they treated prophet, peace be upon him. So, uh, as you could see that this area which is coming more closer and you could see this um, uh, there's a city is there uh, as the township established here uh, this little uh, video will show you the prophet's path where he went through and where he went <laughs>
खरीद ही रबिया के बेटों उदबा और शेबा का एक बाप था हजूर वहाँ सस्ताने के लिए ठहरे और नबी करीम वसल्लम ने अल्लाह के हजूर दुआ वो हुए और नबी करीम वसल्लम से फिर गड़ा के दुआ की अल्लाह ताला ने जबरी सलाम के जरिए दो पहाड़ों के फरिश्तों को भेजा और फरिश्ते करने लगे या रसोल हुकुम कीजिए हम जो ना को इन दो पहाड़ों के बीच में लपेट देंगे लेकिन नबी करीम सल्लम ने फरमाया नहीं इनकी आने आने वाली नस्लों में शायद कोई ईमान लाए ये कहते नबी so um as this person is showing this video i took it because this person had made it so prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam took his a freed slave and adopted son uh, zaid bin harisa with him to go to this city of taif and try to invite them so when he met these people they treated him very harshly yet he asked them please do not say anything to anybody and let me invite people and he stayed there about approximately for a month and he invite every single city uh, resident to come to the islamic dawa everybody rejected him finally by 30th day they said listen there are going to be a rift and confusion and and chaos in our country we want you to leave so prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was about to leave when he was leaving they did the kid they arranged for the kids and all the the hoodlums that they gave them a stone and they had them stand up in the line and when prophet was leaving they would st- pallet stone on him to the point where he got wounded and his blessed footwear was soaked in his own blood and he became fainted and zed carried him on his back they came to a place which was uh, a kind of a orchard and that orchard was owned by a person named atba ibn rabia and he was a very nice person even though he was not muslim and he had a slave whose name was adas adas was a uh, follower of uh, yunus alayhi salam jona and he had heard these a uh, word to praise of Allah because uh, uh, before they would eat so prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he got there uh, the adba uh, son of rabia told his slave adas to feed them with some grapes and some uh, some nutrition or some water so prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam before he would eat anything he said bismillah rahman rahim so he adas said who are you what is going on and prophet explained to him and he said you are the follower of my brother uh, yunus or jona and he said yes and he adas accepted islam this was the first person who accepted islam in that trip and that comforted prophet and comforted the believers and that person uh, uh, after giving the food and nutrition prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam tried to return back to the country when he went to this area this is called nakhla <coughs> he uh, asked uh, um, uh, zaid bin harisa that go and ask somebody to give me protection because prophet was threatened if you come back to the country or the makkah we will kill you so prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sent zaid bin harisa to talk to mutaam bin adi means son of adi and mutaam bin adi uh, to ask for the protection it was one of the arabs way of asking for protection so he gave him the protection guarantee and he came with his son with the with the uh, with the weapon worn and they came to bring him back to the makka and uh, they uh, did the tawaf which was everybody's uh, routine and ritual and after the tawaf they uh, left prophet to his family and home and then they left so this is how prophet was given a protection which was the arabic way of doing certain things in the makka in those days so uh, that was the something which i thought i would uh, and share with you while well, they were coming back from there um um they uh, then prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had the season of hajj because muharram was uh, there then coming to the hajj next year so at that time prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam visited different tribes in a place called akaz there used to be a carnival in that and he uh, and there were many tribes uh, which is majtanazul majaz these have been, have been mentioned and there were tribe of banu amir maharib fazara ghassan murra uh, hanifa sulaim alas banu nadir kanda kalab haris bin kaab azra hazarma and these are the tribes when prophet would go the abul hab would walk behind him he went to each one of these tribe because they came for the hajj and that was the hajj of the non believer tribe before islam hajj and prophet tried to invite each and every one of them but then with him everywhere prophet go abul hab his uncle who was the neighbor and who has we have talked about him before he would walk by him and he would keep saying this man is left away his deen he is nauzubillah kafir and he is a liar do not believe in him uh, and then the banu hanifa which was living in the area yamama where another false prophet musallam kazab was uh, further grew up and then abu uh, abu bakr radhiyallahu ta'ala no also tried to bring banu huzail bin shaiban and invite them to come to the islam and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told them 
that they ask, what do you want to tell us? So the Prophet would not miss an opportunity and he invited them by saying that he recited the verses from Surah uh, An'am, verse number five. He says, O Muhammad, say to them, come to that which is forbidden from your God and do not make partner with God. Do, uh, pay uh, respect and fulfill the obligation to the parents and uh, do not kill any children because of the poverty as abortion. And... Uh, we give them and you sustenance and abstain from the vulgarity and obscenity and whoever whatever sin you do secret or private is stopped from them because god what has made uh forbidden uh will not be allowed so all these things uh and do not kill your children out of the reasons of uh, poverty or unjustly so all lives are precious when he they listen to this thing they appreciated the wording they said we we think you are a good man what you're saying but we do not feel like we want to follow that and uh, uh, then Mafruq, Masna, Wahani, Ibn Qabsiya, these were also the tribe which was prayed, the Banu Amir, they were uh, uh, people on their name, Bahira bin Faras. They said, if you, uh, you're talking very nice, like, uh, if you come in power, then will you let us to be the next uh, inheritor of the authority and, and rule to the Arab? Because we think that you have a potential, we can bring entire Arab into us. So all of these people have certain excuses or certain reasons, and Prophet says, it's only Allah who has the power and authority. I'm just a messenger. And then people started giving, torturing prophets' neighbors. Uh, they named Abu Jahal, Abu Lahab, Aswad bin Abd Ya'uz, Walid bin Mughira, Umayyah bin Khalaf, Nadr bin Haris, Mamba bin Hajjaj, Akhba bin Abi Mu'id, Hakam bin Abi As. These were leaders of the tribes, and they were also, as I showed you in the beginning, that uh, the residents and the, and the neighborhood of Prophet, they were all tribal chiefs as well as these were the neighbors of Prophet, and they would hurt Prophet, they would throw dirt at him, somebody will come and throw dust on his face, some will put the momentum of the camel on his body when he would pray, and this is how they all keep doing all these uh, problems and causing rough time and giving rough time to Prophet Wasallam. The names which are written for these people who have been so harsh and so um, so you know anti-prophet and they would wrap up people and they try to bring them uh, to hurt prophet and prophet Sassam said that in one of the hadiths the most harshest day of his life was the when he was leaving the taif when the people attacked him and stoned him to the a point so when these situation happened allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did a thing to prophet that he turned a group of jinn when he was in the valley of nakhla that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a group of jinn to listen to Prophet and invite them to the Islam. Now this conversation of jinn is very interesting to understand. Uh, when they were there, uh, the conversation is almost like human conversation and jinn themselves also, they believe because these creatures are existing and their existence is like human. But when the Prophet was born, they were not able to get up to the skies and hear the conversation. Jinn were given power by God that they can travel and they can travel in space and touches the skies. And they could eavesdrop into the conversation of the angels. When Prophet Muhammad was born, there were guards over there who were angels guarding the skies so nobody would get hear the conversation. And if they would come closer to the heaven, they will be shot with the meteorites. And this is what is mentioned in this. So they were about a group of, uh, when they found this restriction, they went out on the earth to see where they are. Now they are trapped or they are restricted only to the earth. So group of them were traveling and the group of the one first group of jinn who came in contact with Prophet or listened to him when he was making Fajr prayer while he was in the Valley of Nakhla, which I mentioned you at the place where they are thus given the uh, grapes. Uh, these were the Nasibin, the, the jinns from Nasibin, which is an area between Turkey and, and Syria. And uh, when they heard the Quran, and they started talking to each other. They said, shut up, quiet, listen to this. When they listened to the reading of the Quran while Prophet was performing prayer, when he finished the prayer, they asked him, what is this? And this the Prophet told them, I am a prophet, a messenger of God. So they said to each other, we thought our leaders, which means the Iblis and other the Syria, of, the, of the leaders of the jinn, they have misguided them or misled them that they cannot, uh, there's going to be no prophet. There's going to be no messenger among the jinns and the men. Yet there is a messenger and these were the jinns who have a longer life. So they knew the scripture which they heard from Jesus and Moses and they believed in Bible. So there are jinns who are Christian, who are Jewish, who are atheist and they are after this 
visit, they become Muslim. So jinn were conversing in a very unusual way to talk about it. So in the first uh, few words, uh, Quran talk about it. Now there are some Muslim who also have a problem with uh, believing that the jinns are a real creature and they started making some interpretation. But in Quran in many places it is mentioned uh, in the Quran that uh, in the Surah Araf 12 uh, verse in Hajar verse 26-27 Surah Rahman 14 and 19 Surah Hajar 27th verse Allah have mentioned about these jinns and Surah Kahf there was 50 verse number 50 Surah Araf verse number 27 which we mentioned when we were reading about it and then Surah Hajj 16 to 18 Surah Saf 6 to 10th verse Surah Al-Mulk verse number 5 Surah Saba uh, it's verse number 14 and Al-Baqarah word 30 to 34 and Kahf verse number 15 and Surah Naval verse number 39. All these places Allah has mentioned about a creature which is known as jinn. And jinn are bigger creature, they can hear more better, they can uh, see farther, they are much more stronger and apparently they have a lot of powers. Uh, but they are again not superior to human. And this is something which we should understand and we should listen to this, uh, this recitation. Bismillah. 